because it was highlighted last Monday night at a meeting uh, in Pilltown, Pilltown Community Centre regarding the serious difficulties that exist on the roadway between uh, Mooncoin and Carrick and Shore. Now, 500 people attended that meeting, Minister. All local people, all from the surrounding areas. It was organised by the uh, local priest, Father Moore, with community activist Robert Duggan. And all of the people that were there had an interest in restoring safety along that stretch of roadway. And as we spoke at that meeting to a packed audience, there was 10 white crosses behind our backs, behind that main table. And the priest referred to that roadway as the Valley of Death. Now, the, this dates back to the design of the road from 1995 up to construction and opening of the road in 2002. There was constant difficulties with the NRA at that time and the engineer on that, on that uh, project. To the extent that those that raised matters about that road were often challenged legally to stop raising them. The local radio, I as a member of the council, and since then, nobody has actually officially opened the road. Now, in this house, we all know that if money is spent on a road, some politician will cut the tape. I have nothing against that, but nobody wanted this road. This is the road that nobody owns. Nobody wants it, in spite of the fact that it was funded through the NRA. And every effort since then to get the NRA and now your department and your TII to look at this has failed. In fact, sometime in 2012, money was allocated for an overpass on this particular stretch of road. Everyone was demanding that overpass going back to the original design stage, and they still would not give in and provide it. They waited until all of these deaths, numerous accidents, some recorded by the local guardie and some not even reported to the guards. It is a notorious piece of road and it is the worst piece of engineering that you will ever see. Two roads going into one, a firm line of wire going down the centre of the road, dangerous to motorcyclists that we heard the other night and dangerous to pedestrians. People, local and otherwise, travelling up that road to turn to go back. It is unbelievable that that road would have been funded and constructed by the NRA and that they would have ignored the issues that at that time, had they taken into account, we would have a different road and a safer road. And it took a local farmer, Donald Norris, driving his cattle down that road. It took him to force the NRA to give him a safe underpass at that point. And the, the, the difficulties that he went through to achieve his rights was absolutely shocking that he would be treated in that way by a state agency. So we're looking to the future now and we're asking for a complete redesign of that roadway, taking into account every single turn off that roadway and every single safety aspect that has been raised about that road, and we're asking that the funding be provided immediately to provide the overpasses and work necessary. Thank you, Deputy, for observing the time. Minister, you have four minutes. Um, thank you, Kankala. I'd, I'd like to thank the Deputy for producing this topical issue, and I know it's very important. And uh, as the Deputy knows, I've been meeting uh, TDs from the area tomorrow, because uh, it's a matter which concerns them all, and you've raised it on their behalf, I know, today. I, uh, I think it's reasonable to say, before I give you the scripture to reply, that uh, what you've said is, is fairly compelling, it, but, and what I will do uh, in response to what you've said, and I'll tell the TDs tomorrow, I'll ask, I'll ask the TII to respond to what you've had to say today uh, and to look at it and to report to me on this road uh, in, and looking at it purely in terms of safety, because I think that's the case that you've made. Uh, and it's unusual uh, for me to 
have, I get a lot of these uh, pleas for roads on the adjournment, but it's unusual to have a case made uh, just which is, which is compelling if, if the statistics are right uh, in terms of safety, and I think it should be looked at that. There may be a perfectly, there's never an adequate answer for road deaths or a lack of road safety, but it may be that it's not as bad as you say, but if it's as bad as you say, there is, there is a reason for giving you a very good and a, a, a response to this, which is, which is a serious and considered one. Uh, let me say, as Minister for Transport, Tourism and Sport, I have responsibility for overall policy and funding in relation to the National Roads Programme. The planning, design and implementation of individual national road projects is a matter for the transport is infrastructure. Ireland, which I have already referred to, under the Roads Act 1993 to 2015 in conjunction with the local authorities concerned. Within its capital budget, the assessment and prioritisation of individual projects is a matter in the first instance for TIE IA in accordance with Section 19 of the Roads Act. Decisions relating to the N24 are therefore oper operational matters for TII. That's why I will ask them for a direct response to what you have to say. The capital plan published in September 2015 outlined proposed transport investment priorities to 2022, the transport element of the plan was framed by the conclusions reached in my department's strategic investment framework for land transport. This report highlighted the importance of maintenance and renewal of transport infrastructure together with targeted investments to address particular bottlenecks and critical safety issues. The capital plan provides €6 billion Euros for investment in the roads network in the period to 2022, with €4.4 billion earmarked for the maintenance and strengthening of the existing extensive network throughout the country and £1.6 billion for new projects, allowing for the commitments relating to the PPP projects. The balance available for new projects within the available capital envelope is limited. As Minister, I have to work within the annual allocation set out in the plan. And in, in this context, the capital plan provides for a gradual build-up in capital funding from the current relatively low base towards the levels needed to support maintenance and improvement works. It will, however, take some years yet under the capital plan to restore steady state funding levels for land transport. The focus will have to continue to be on the maintenance and renewal of infrastructure. There will be a significant ramp up in funding from 2020, which will facilitate the construction of the road improvement projects, including the plan. While available funding is not sufficient to address all the demands of improvement schemes, including schemes such as the upgrade to the N24, by the end of the plan period, I expect the capital funding for the road network will be back up to the levels needed to support maintenance and improvement works in the future. As regards the possibility of additional funding within the plan period, the Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform indicated in his budget speech that he is bringing forward the capital plan review. There is a strong case for additional funding for the transport sector, you, Minister. which I will which make robustly. I have to interrupt. Okay, fine. So I will come, come back. Deputy uh, John McGinnis, two minutes. But, Minister, the, 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 again, the reason for raising this today is not because it has just happened. This is an issue that has gone on since 1995, right through the course of design and building this road. Now, it is so dangerous that, as I said, 500 people attended the meeting. I'm asking you now, will you come and examine for yourself that stretch of roadway? Because in the last contribution made by a minister here, I was listening to the reply about Tusla, and she said that she indicates to us that her priorities. Now, I'm asking you, in the context of your priorities, which is safety on our roads, which is representation for local communities, will you agree to say to the Transport Infrastructure Ireland that you want the funds allocated to this project? And before you do that, will you come and visit that stretch of roadway so that you can see for yourself the plight of that local community and the desperate need for a redesign of that road. It's not good enough to have an analysis. It's not good enough to have a report. We know what has happened. Listen to the local community and respond to them by ensuring that safety is restored by investment in that roadway. And these are local people who use it every day, going to school, going to work in Clamell and Carrick and Shore, and then the others that use it by way of connection uh, along that route. Now, the money was there for an overpass, and it was emphasised at the meeting the other night that had that money been spent 
when it was allocated in 2012, it would have relieved some of the issues. Two overpasses are needed, and a new safety modern approach to the design of that road to eliminate once and for all the issues that confront this local community and the people in the surrounding areas. Thank you, Kankola. Um, I'm aware that there was a recent accident uh, at Tower Hill Junction between Piltown and Vidal. This junction was the subject of an accident improvement project a number of years ago, and the safety section in TII is, I'm sure as the Deputy knows, now reviewing the junction in conjunction with the County Council to see if further improvements can be implemented. I think we do need answers if, if, if what the Deputy says is correct. I think we do, do need answers. And safety, obviously, is, is a top priority. It's a, it comes above improvements in the roads. It's something which is, it, which is absolutely imperative that we address. Uh, and I, I take the Deputy's point, and I hope he'll uh, accept the fact that I will certainly make sure that they report to me as soon as possible on what he said about safety, because that is something which has got to go to the top of the pile before road, before road improvements themselves. Will I, um, will I come down to Kilkenny and have a look? Do you know, Deputy, I've known you for a very long time, and it's the first time you've ever invited me down to Kilkenny, uh, which is, so it's... Uh, it, I, yeah, I'm sure it's got something to do with it, but I find it extremely uh, uh, flattering that you'd asked me to do so. Uh, and uh, I see absolutely no reason why I shouldn't come down. Uh, I will come down. If it's, with, if it's anywhere near the Tipperary border, uh, I'll, I'll nip over to see Deputy Matty McGrath as well, who, who's happy down there as well. Uh, and it's certainly it's important if, there is, if there's a safety issue. I think it's important that it's addressed, and I think it's important it's addressed by a minister. What I will look at, I look at what the TII has to say, the statistics. Uh, and to see that they're consistent with what you say as well, of course. Uh, and it, if that's the case, yeah, I'll, I'll be delighted to come and visit you in King Kelly and have a look at the, the road to which you refer, which I know extends beyond your own particular constituency boundaries. Well, on that note, we'll move on to the next. Uh